Welcome to Go Lurk Yourself, a podcast about streaming on the internet. I am Cherry Cake. And I am Crunky. We aim to bring you regular interviews with your favorite streamers to find out more on the person behind the webcam. To give you more of an inside look on how they got started, what their goals are, and what keeps them coming back to streaming. Today we're speaking to Grand Keys. He's a US-based streamer who also is also partnered with Twitch, a super expert in Mario Maker. You can find Grand Keys at twitch.tv slash Grand Keys, G-R-A-N-D. K-E-Y-S. So welcome, Keys. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Hey, guys. I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm doing, doing great. pretty good. Yeah. Man, it's thanks for having me on. This is exciting. Yeah, I, I'm welcome. super excited. Cherry told me that she reached out to you and that you would uh, listen to a few episodes. I was like, oh, score. That's awesome. Yeah, I was listening to, uh, I think, the past three or four episodes. Um, and I, I listen to a lot of podcasts whenever I'm not working um or streaming live i usually have a podcast on in the background so um it's good having great content in the background going on yeah Ooh, i appreciate the much. feedback for that uh we I've, i also listen to a lot of comedy podcasts and stuff at work and uh when i'm doing some mindless work uh, number crunching I'll, I'll pop some on and uh, i've always had a dream of doing this and my friend uh, gorby started a podcast and was telling me that you know it's not it's not a big barrier to entry and, and really helped me get uh, you know, interested and, you know, pumped up about doing it. I just, it was too much to take on myself. And I reached out to Cherry and she's like, that sounds awesome. Let's do it. That's awesome. Like that's, yeah, I'm just here I, to off to keep doing it. <laughs> when did you guys start it? Uh, let's Ooh. see. When was that about two, three months ago? Yeah. Well, and what, how many episodes are we on now? Seven? Dude, we just published nine. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even realize. So keys will be, 10. Wow. I believe so. He might be 11, depending on what we have in the pipes. Uh, all right. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. First things first, where did you get the name Grand Keys from? Because I have wondered this ever since I've been in your <laughs> channel. Yeah, um, it's kind of been with me since uh, the beginning um, like of my gaming career. I uh, of like my serious, when I started to get really serious about games. But um, back when Halo 1 came out, I was a huge fan of Captain Keys and Xbox Live came out and all that stuff. And I got my name pretty much where everyone else got their name, Xbox Live, back in the day. And uh, I wanted to name my Xbox Live name Captain Keys because he was like my favorite character in the Halo universe. And obviously that was taken and everything else was taken. I tried like Admiral Keys and all that stuff. And so I just tried Grand Keys because I've heard of like in the military there's like grand admirals and i don't know something about that so i was just like grand keys and that's where it came out and everyone thinks i got it from like music stuff but i didn't and uh just a little ironic because i am into music as well but um yeah it actually came from halo nice what you say you're into music do you what instrument do you play uh i play piano so it is kind of funny <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <laughs> it's not because of that it's just a funny thing just an accidental coincidence that fits both that's great yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said you made your character's name or your 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 uh, persona, online persona name back in the Halo days. Mm -hmm. did you, um, when did when did you start actually streaming, and what was it that made you take that leap? Yeah, um, I started streaming two years ago in December, and the thing, like, I I kind of got into it in the weirdest way. It wasn't like. Uh, I woke up one day and I watched streamers for years and was like, I'm going to do this. It was really like I didn't watch streamers at all. I never really watched streams until I started streaming. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it was really, really weird. But um, I the, I guess I sort of did like there's this guy, Patrick Klepek. He's a he at the time he was a reporter at Kotaku and um, he was doing this Mario Maker stuff. And I listened to a podcast and he was on that podcast talking about his Mario Maker stuff. And I've always been a huge Mario fan. So I checked it out one week and it was on Twitch, but I didn't really know what Twitch was or the streaming or any of that stuff. Uh, gotcha. And um, so I jumped on his Twitch and like watched it for a little bit. And that made me fall in love with Mario Maker and was like, I'm going to buy this game and I'm going to put videos of myself out there doing this. And so I started off with YouTube with like a couple of videos and that was, it was horrible, completely crashed and burned. And I was like, let's just put myself out there live and see if anyone shows up. 
And it was the perfect time. I was at the right place at the right time because Mario Maker was still new enough to where the community was, you know, skyrocketing. And it wasn't, there wasn't a crazy amount of streamers in there. So if you were streaming in the Mario Maker community at that time, it was just like, there's a lot of demand for streamers. So it was, I was, I just started streaming and I automatically had like 10, 15 people in my channel. And, uh, after my first stream, I stopped and my wife walked in the room and was like, how'd it go? And I was like, this is freaking awesome. Like, this <laughs> is amazing. And it blew me away that I was able to do that. And so I just did it for the next couple of, you know, months just here and there. And I didn't have follower alerts or any of that stuff. Like, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like putting video out there and talking to people. <laughs> yeah, that's that, kind of the, the best way to do it, you know, is yeah. I, I, we've talked to quite a few streamers at this point and we've, we've, we've had people who watch Twitch for a long time and then decided to take the jump. And then we've had people like yourself or like me who were like, wait, what is Twitch? Hey, let's give it a go. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's super backwards. So, you know, you, you kind of touched on this already, you, you know, you told your wife it was super awesome and, and it was really like that thrill, that rush of hanging out and playing video games and let people watch what is the best part like the other day uh you you hosted me uh yeah. and i i need to apologize for <laughs> no dude I was going no, to apologize no. for you but i thought you might have done <laughs> no 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 he uh it was the craziest thing my computer kept freezing up ever since i installed uplay on my computer uh -huh. it's been crashing dude, uplay's the worst i i'm you know i'm here to, i'm not going to i'm not going to argue with you yeah i'm sorry <laughs> I, I, my chat disappears, my computer freezes up and I'm like, I'm going to have to reboot. And I'm, I'm sort of glad that I didn't. Cause even though I missed your message that you hosted me, like I went back to stream labs, it's not there. Yeah. I don't know if it's because you're partnered and I've never had a partner uh, host before. So it was like amazing. Weird. Yeah. I have no but, idea. I, I, when I hosted in, uh, you were literally right in the middle of getting like your third, fourth and fifth kill. Unpub <laughs> so i was like dude okay you just do your thing like just go kill the people and i'll just you know it was just super cool well i, I looked over with PUBG. yeah exactly i love playing it and i love streaming it but man it can be like oh yeah i'm streaming on twitch i better look at my damn chat <laughs> <laughs> exactly I, I looked over and i'm like my fault you know you were excited about 15 that's like usually that's like my high point if i have 15 i'm i'm really doing well yeah and i look over that's and there's like 65 I'm like what in the hell and then i see you said hey i'm like oh hey and then it dawned on me after, after my half fried brain went wait a minute if he's here and you have that many viewers he hosted you and you missed it you idiot no, <laughs> oh, it's but totally fine. so i mean you, you were excited about having 15 streamers at, you know one point early on mm -hmm. what is it about streaming that you would say is your favorite part of it? what really is that that lifeblood that keeps you coming back and kept you going early on uh, that's a good question. Uh, early on, I think it was the sense of community. And uh, I know it's kind of a lame answer, but the sense of just like a bunch of friends hanging out together, uh, watching the same sort of content and everyone's really passionate about it. Uh, that That's what kept me coming back. And also just like the there's some sort of feeling you get when it's going really well. And I don't mean that in like an arrogant way at all, but like when you have like a stream and you have more people than you're expecting, or you, um, you know, played a better, a level better than you expected. Like the, the, it's like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a jazzed feeling. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're pumped up. Like that feeling is amazing and that, as well. Yeah. Early on, that was like, you know, getting off and having 15 people watch me. I was like, holy crap, I just had 15 people watching me like play this game. Like that is unreal. Like it just blew I, my mind. That kept me coming back. I, I know you know, you said you play piano. Have, have you ever played it like in a band setting or in front yeah. of an audience? Yeah, exactly. I, it kind of reminds me that I've, I play music as well. I just play in crap dive bar bands around my hometown, but it, it kind of has that same feeling to me of like it's it's somewhat of a community because or a, a group effort because you're playing with people that you know you've got moderators you've got friends you're you, if you're playing a multiplayer game especially but also there's a bit of a performance to it you know so mm -hmm. it's kind of all that mixed together I don't think I don't think community is a cheesy answer even if it sounds a little bit because it literally is what keeps me back coming back right now right. Yeah, it's definitely totally. the most most popular answer that we've had whenever we ask someone that you know what keeps them bringing back everyone pretty much just say it's the community that mm -hmm. that makes them want to go on stream 
Yeah, it's it's unreal. Like the fact that we're able to be a part of a real community that's not like one hundred percent in your world all the time. Like it's it's a virtual community, and the fact that we're able to be a part of it and actually make real relationships and stuff through that is unreal. Like my best friends now are streamers, which is crazy. Exactly. I mean, yeah. there's probably two or three real life friends, and I say real life friends. This this just to give you a bit of history on me, you know, because this, this podcast is all about grand keys, so I'm going to talk a lot. No, <laughs> but different than usual. I, I made a lot of friends on an MMO that I played back in the early 2000s that are still coming to my stream and watching and playing games with me today. So I know exactly where mm. you're coming from. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Keith. So you said that you you started streaming a couple of years ago now? Yeah. Uh, almost, um, two. almost two. Oh, yeah, because it's coming up to your anniversary soon, isn't it? Yeah, well, my partnership anniversary is next month. Yeah, so you started uh, streaming a couple of years ago. What what are the main things that you have learned in that period of time? And is there anything that you would recommend to people that are maybe thinking about doing it or are just starting out? Have you got any tips or advice for them? Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of people that start off and they uh, their th the thought process is like, I want to be the next lyric or like, <clears throat> you know, ninja. Like, I want to get 10, 20,000 people watching me right, like in the start of it. And if you do that, like, I feel like you'll be disappointed pretty quickly. So for me, starting off, uh, I picked a game I loved. I really think if if you guys are streamers and you're starting off, like the best thing to do is to just pick something you love and really just like do the very best you can with it. Um, one thing I always say is like, do the best you can with what's in your hand. Like if someone, if you have a one thousand dollar computer or a five hundred dollar computer, do the best you can as far as streaming quality with that computer. If you have, if you play Mario Maker, do the best you can at playing Mario Maker. Like, do what you can uh, with what's in your hand to be able to put out the best content you can. And that's really good the, advice. The bottom line of it, though, is that enjoy. You got to enjoy what you do. If you hate what you do, like you're gonna probably end up burning out. And I've seen yeah. so many, I've seen people burn out. A lot of streamers burn out uh, since I've been streaming because they're playing a game that they don't enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. And it, if you really go all in on one game, like variety casters have such a hard road ahead of them. Like if you guys are doing variety, anyone listening does variety casting, like I am so impressed by you guys. It is so hard. Sticking to one game, it definitely makes it a little bit easier to grow. But if you do stick to one game, you're probably going to be playing that game for the rest of your life yeah i i have seen people uh streamers that i follow and streamers that we've talked to on here who said something very similar and and i've actually since i had those early conversations have seen people kind of hatingly play a game if you know what i mean yeah they're like eh, this is the game i have to play because that's what all my fans want but i really don't want to play it right now and then then they switch over to something else and their viewership goes like in the tank right Exactly. That's and that happens to all of us. Like, there's some days I'm I'm gonna be super honest on this podcast. I want to be like absolutely really open. Yeah. But like, uh, there's some days when I when I'm playing Mario Maker and I really just don't want to be playing Mario Maker, and that shows. And but like, it it's I don't know. There's a if you do that forever, you're gonna burn out. But yeah. I always yeah. try to balance it with other things and things like that. Like if I'm having a day where I'm really not feeling Mario Maker, I'll usually switch over to something else in the afternoon and play that for a little bit afterwards to kind of like still have a positive experience, you know? Yeah, some so, of the uh, some of the people I've seen, you know, that are that are single game streamers who have successfully spun that around, they do exactly what you just recommended. They start out with the game that everybody can, comes to see. And then they switch over to what they want to play like halfway through or vice versa. They'll start out with a game no one wants to see and switch over and with the carrot on the stick being, hey, guys, I know you're all here to see game X, but I'm going to play game Y for a little bit because I want to see what it's like. You guys come watch it with me and then we'll switch over and play that other game later. Exactly. Later. Yeah. That's and cool. I, the thing is, is also Twitch is so new. Like it's, you know, just over five years or like almost six years, I guess. Uh, so there's not like a formula to success. And yeah. a lot of people like to think that there is, but there isn't. And in my opinion, and so like, do what you can to just do what you love, and you'll find a community of people that love the same thing as well that come around you guys. <laughs> exactly. 
So one of the things that uh, we noticed was that you have a bio on your channel, uh, a section that talks about how you used to play video games with your grandfather. Um, that sounds really awesome. Yeah. As someone who's probably a little older than you, my grandfather never even saw a video game. Oh, <laughs> dang. That's one if he, if he, if he ever yeah. did. Uh, so w were there any specific memories or stories about that that you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, I, I My grandfather was... He was pretty old when he found out about video games. Uh, he played arcade games way back way, like way back when. Um, but he ended up getting an NES in his home before I even had a console or whatever. And I was like, you know, just when the NES was hitting its prime and stuff, I was super young. And uh, we would call go over to his house. He lived about three hours away. So whenever we would visit, it was like a big deal because we were going to visit like Nintendo grandpa. That's what we called him because he had a Nintendo. <laughs> so we go Aww. over to his house and he was the best duck hunter on the face of the planet. Like <laughs> oh, I wow. have a, I have this picture that um, I show on stream sometimes where he's just like, he literally wore to the nines, all of his hunting gear and like played the Nintendo and Nintendo entertainment system with like the laser gun. And played oh, duck hunt. And so yeah he introduced us to that and then also mario uh and those are the only two games he had he had that one cart that was like mario slash duck hunt yeah you know what oh, I, mean? God. So, I had that one actually yeah so we played That's how that old he is. <laughs> yeah so we played that i mean just like whenever we would go there and that was really my introduction into games like i was super young you know like two years old so I, I have to admit, when I watch you play Mario Maker, I can see that passion for Mario that I, that I have, and and I'm I've really wanted to touch base with you on this in the podcast because yeah. my problem with Mario Maker is that I I mean I'm I grew up just like you I I grew up playing Mario that was one of my first mainline games I played I played all of them yeah. And Mario Maker infuriates me to no end at some of those <laughs> levels because yeah, it's, it does it's like all of us. Nintendo would never do this. Nintendo would never put <laughs> exactly. these trolley ass levels out here. And it's like, wow, what is going on? I dreamed of making Mario levels as a kid. I mean, I, my friends and I would get out graph paper and like, hey, you know, this is real nerdy stuff when we were like, you know, I don't know, fifth, fourth, fifth grade. We would draw up these levels and like th those are Sonic levels. And we're going to we're going to program our own Mario Maker game. So w when Mario Maker came out, was it 2014? Yeah, it was uh, 2015, I think. 2015. It's, been just, it's been out for two years now. Okay. Yeah, it's just about its anniversary, isn't it? Yeah, it just it, had its anniversary. My daughter, I took my daughter up to uh, the north side of town about an hour away. They had a preview event for Mario Maker. And I was so pumped and she was pumped, obviously. She was probably eight years old at the time. And we went up there and we played all day at like a, it was like a GameStop in a mall. And there was, they had this big event. That's where awesome. People, it was, it was great. I got pictures of it. We got a bunch of swag and, and posters and stuff like that. And, and we got my, <laughs> Molly, my That's daughter so got cool. uh, signature from the nintendo rep that was there it was pretty fun. <laughs> i didn't know that they did like events like that for mario maker when it was coming out yeah they they had like you know nintendo is terrible at publicizing things like that they they had it they teamed up with gamestop and maybe best buy and had mm -hmm. demo events for the wii u a lot but that you just never heard about them unless you like found the one place on reddit and talked about it right right So I know this because I watch you a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Crunk knows it a little bit. Um, yeah, Cherry's the bigger Mario uh, Maker fan between the two of us. She, I like yes. it, but I, I don't. I that upper echelon, you know, the the realm you guys are in with the the super experts and and doing all the. I'm the, like the lower of the upper echelon, uh, though. I mean, Keys is better than me anyway. I can't well, do super expert. Let's just say from the basement, you guys are all high up there. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you, your stream is uh, centered around Mario Maker. Uh, uh -huh. What, like, we've already covered like that, um, how you got into Mario Maker, but what is it that that draws you? I uh, initially drew you to it, and um, why does it keep you coming back to Mario Maker? Um, originally, like I said way back when, it was Patrick Klepek seeing him play that. Uh, essentially, they made. They had a feud going on, him and this guy named Dan, and he was making these horrible troll levels for Patrick. And Patrick had to complete them. And so he spent like, you know, 12 plus hours on each level, like trying to figure it out. And something about that just sparked like the, what you could do with this game. It, like it sparked an excitement about what you could do with this game. And I was like, oh my gosh, like 
you don't have to make just like the traditional levels you can you can make a horrible level and send it to someone <laughs> and so i was like yeah. there's so much you can probably do in this game and it was really what originally hooked me to it was like what things can i find out that no one else has done or what okay. things can i try to like do in this game i thought i was going to be a creating streamer like from the get-go i thought i was going to be sitting there making just level after level after level after level but um i quickly realized that i suck at making levels and so <laughs> you're not that bad i've seen you make levels <laughs> yeah i still make levels but mostly troll levels but every once in a while <laughs> I, I can make two levels i can make troll levels and speed run levels and those are like ah, good that's it i just i don't try anything else because i suck at it all except that so um <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, that's what got me like originally into it. And then what keeps me coming back is just the excitement of finding new things still. Like it's been two years and we're still finding stuff like yeah, all the special. time. And um, just getting levels like I can't tell you every single day, I at least get one level where I'm like, holy crap, I did not think that this was possible. Like that is yeah. crazy that we're still getting those levels like that. Like your mind is still being blown um and that's really cool because it's you know the beloved mario like there's so much nostalgia to it and so yeah, much it's still hard for me to believe that nintendo just handed the keys to their audience because that allows gives them the tool set that, to make infinite combinations like you say and also can they ever put out a 2d mario again now that mario maker's right. out in the wild <laughs> maybe i think they're gonna put out mario maker 2 to be honest but yeah like uh, on the switch I yeah, I totally I totally think that they're going to do that. But um, yeah, Nintendo kind of like gave us the keys. It was kind of interesting. Um, they ended up giving like releasing Mario Maker with a good amount of tools and then came out with a couple of updates that added some more tools. And then after those initial updates, they end up, actually ended up going in and starting sh to strip out um things so a lot of the tech that was originally in mario maker is no longer in mario maker and you can't make levels with it what specifically are you talking which one things did they yeah. take out i'm just curious. so um a big one was the p-switch physics they changed so before that you could like jump on p-switches and instantly jump off them it's called a p-switch jump you can still do that today but they made it like a two frame window it's a lot more difficult yeah. Um, oh, wow. before it was really squishy and you could do it like everyone could do it um, they took that out they took away something called sticky flying which is like a traditional thing back in super mario world where if you have the cape you can dive bomb and pull up into a block and it, you'll keep your flight like going forward as long as oh, just, yeah. as long as you're against the ceiling mm -hmm. and like it was weird tech things but they just kept taking out all of this tech which in the like the high-end kaizo community was what like it was built around and they took away like sideways spring jumps and which is a whole thing i'm not going to go into all that but so they just, just went in and started just stripping out all this tech out of the game and uh a lot of the mario maker streamers got extremely upset in nintendo and started to kind of speak out a little bit against it and as soon as that happened nintendo just completely stopped updating the game altogether and so oh, yeah. do you think their their intentions were, were to like cut down on the troll levels or did they, I know they never said, but what, how do you read the, what those actions were aimed to do? Yeah. There's a lot of reasons, like a lot of ways you could look into it. Um, but I think one reason is like you said, to cut down on troll levels like that. Um, but I, I think to be honest, I think Nintendo likes the troll levels. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause I mean, you play some of their levels that like the game came with or whatever. Some of them mm -hmm. are pretty trolly. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm like, this is a, this is a troll level Nintendo. But um, yeah, other ways is I think that they were like, I think Twitch in general was promoting a lot of these tricks and they, they went towards like the high end Kaizo tricks. Like they specifically took out tricks that were used by people to do like really hard. When I say Kaizo, by the way, I mean like uh, they're just like brutally difficult stages that require high end tech like high-end strats that are just very difficult to master two so, frame input <laughs> yeah exactly one frame input two in frame input all these tricks that are normally possible in mario and uh those are the ones that they kind of focused in that time and came in and just kind of took all of them out so a lot of people think that it was focused towards the kaizo community and they wanted to kind of 
deter people from doing that but there's no way to really know you know i don't think we'll ever really know what why they were doing it but they did upset a lot of people when in doing that Uh, even though they did do that i think they still there's still enough tools to create a really trolley level anyways absolutely man i create troll level every tuesday so it's like yeah exactly (laughs) i'm still creating them goddamn invisible (laughs) blocks (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the bane yeah. of your existence in Mario Maker. I think that's the thing about Mario Maker that, like, if if you've anyone who's ever watched my stream knows that I, I get a little uh, uh, ragey at times. And man, nothing makes my blood boil like going in, in to a level and getting all the way to the end of a Mario Maker level, and there's an invisible block that puts you into a pit. I'm like, oh, exactly. Who? It's the <laughs> best. And then you're left with the music just going dun 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 dun, and you're like, what? Oh man, I just can't handle it. I, I mean, I've I've tried streaming Mario Maker, and I've tried like before I streamed, I played it a lot, and mm-hmm. I would just get my hands would be sweating. I'm like, I get this. This is not for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fun. I, I do I do like it, but it, like there's a there's a certain threshold where I just know it would be very bad for me to stream. Mm-hmm. I'd be it's, bad on my headphone budget. It's great when yeah headphone budget yeah. <laughs> it's great when you get a good level, but when you get a really really like just a completely RNG level, it drives you up the wall. Absolutely. Even me, like still playing, like if I get, I play a lot of viewer levels and if I get like four or five bad levels in a row, after a while, I just like, it starts to get to me and you can yeah. see it. You know what I mean? It gets to, it gets to everyone, no matter who it is. Um, I was watching you, you yesterday, the day before when you had your Luigi suit on. Oh yeah, that was yesterday. yesterday yeah, with, with the green screen, that was awesome. And, and I, I think you were pl- you were you were wait you were trying to finish a level to play some, and you were like, "Hey, I'm going to play your level next." But there was just these epic. I don't remember specifics, but this epic trolley stuff, and you're like, "Really, really, dude?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what we're doing right now. <laughs> yes, it's like it's not, the worst trolls are the levels that like you get submitted to, and you're like, "This level is super awesome," and then you get to like the last third of the level. And it's just complete, just crap. And like, yeah, like they got so far cool. and they just couldn't. Be yeah, and it. you're like, dude, yeah. you you had this level like in the bag. Like this was gonna be a great <laughs> level, man. What happened? So, do you provide feedback to people to like uh, to help them work on their levels too? Yeah, uh, mostly if they ask. I mean, um, I've given to be honest, like the same feedback over and over and over and over and over again. So it's kind of like if someone's asking me or really wanting to like hear feedback, I'm totally down. But um, a lot of people don't want to hear feedback. Like they say they do, but they don't actually want to hear feedback and yeah. they get upset if you do do that. So I mm-hmm. I kind of just kind of play that on the back foot until, you know, unless they're like, what do you think the level? I'm like, awesome. You know, I'm right. always honest. I'm never going to be like, this level is fantastic and it's the worst level ever. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah, as a, if somebody wants specific feedback, like yesterday there was someone who wanted specific feedback on their level. So as I was playing, I was giving it to them. Um, that sort of thing, yeah. That's cool. I'm, I'm like you. I, I I would probably enjoy Mario Maker, like if it comes out for the Switch, more on the creative side. I think that would be a, a neat community to be a part of. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I between streaming and work and podcasting, it's like who's got the time? Because you, to really do a good level, you got to put some time into it, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And you get you get like used to the creating the skills and everything. So right, you've created like this certain trick a bunch of times in some other levels, and you know you can kind of just like mentally copy and paste it after a while. It's like a so tool you get, set you develop and can use. Yeah. yeah, but I mean to get a really good level, it does take. It, you're definitely going to be sinking some hours. One thing I did want to ask you, Key, is just going back to what we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, where did the hatred of Luigi come from? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's, oh, I've, okay, I was the youngest uh, in my family, and when we finally got a Super Nintendo and we were playing Super Mario World 2 player, I was always Luigi, Time to play. and mm-hmm. I never was able to, like, do anything, like, I, I don't know, being the youngest, I would die a lot and all <laughs> sorts of stuff, and I, I just, after a while, Luigi just got to me, and then, mm-hmm. like, Mario Kart came out with all the Luigi memes, and, like, 
Um, if you guys have never seen those, Luigi's like the biggest. Uh, he's the biggest troll in Mario Maker, or not Mario Maker, uh, Mario Kart. If you yeah. watch any of like Mario Kart, ah. anyway, and then he's just like creepy Ew. overall. Like if you think about <laughs> Luigi, he's he's like not in the limelight, but sort of in the limelight, and he's always Ooh. going off on these weird adventures. And yeah. no one really knows if he's actually in love with Peach as well, or if he's in love with one of the other princesses. And it's just really confusing, and it's just <laughs> creepy. It's just, Get a weird vibe from him. He's like the tall, skinny uncle. Well, it doesn't help too that like in most of the Japanese art, he's smelling his own finger. Have you guys exactly? Ever seen that? Oh, whoa! <laughs> the first time it, I've heard of it's, this. It's it's not the disturbing thing that you're thinking of. It's because it, it means something in Japanese culture. It's like a sly. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like like Grand Keys was saying. It's kind of like a sly. I, I don't know exactly what it means, but it's not. <laughs> it's not no, the disgusting I thing thinking. you thought of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's How a lot of weird you, stuff like I'm that. But no. There's a lot of weird stuff like that with Luigi and also Toad in general. Like if you look at the Wii U home screen um, of Mario Maker, like the splash screen of Mario Maker, there's Toad up in the top left hand corner and he's giving you two birds. And if you zoom in on it, it's legit like weird stuff like that. You're like, what is going on right now? Like he's literally holding up two middle fingers. When you played Mario 1, you, you had to know you had to get tired of seeing Toad. Because every fourth castle, you're like, oh, here's a princess. Nope, she's in another castle. We'll <laughs> <laughs> I think one of yeah. my favorite, we talk about it all the time though on stream, is like Mushroom Kingdom politics. It's just like, <laughs> there's so much. It's such a topic that is so deep that you could just go into and make up theories for for hours. Everyone's favorites, like Mario's the bad guy, actually. and Bowser's the good guy. And it's crazy. Yeah, Bowser's trying to free uh, Peach from Mario's clutches, and he keeps going and retrieving her. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, or my favorite is that like Mario and Peach are both like teenagers, and they are they're like have teenager angst or whatever, and they're trying to <laughs> run away together. But Bowser Aww. keeps stealing Peach away to keep her from running away, and so Mal like Mario and Peach are on the same team. But everyone else is against them running away together. But Mario's trying to go capture her and take her away, away from the Mushroom Kingdom. Anyway. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's deep down the rabbit hole there. Yeah, it? no, yeah. It gets deeper. <laughs> it gets weird. Yeah, it does. <laughs> if anyone, okay, if I can just say this. If anyone yeah. wants to legit look into some weird Mushroom Kingdom politics, look up Wario is actually Mario. And that will just, you'll spend hours reading about different theories. It's crazy. I'm Ooh, glad you said that and not where I thought you were going because this is a family podcast. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I just, I I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> we were just talking about Luigi sniffing his fingers. Come on. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, Toad giving the bird, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's not a family <laughs> podcast at all. No, this is a bad joke. <laughs> Are there uh, any streamers that you regularly watch when you're not streaming, Grand Keys? Yeah. Um, I watch a lot of Mario Maker, obviously. Some of my favorites are Grand Pooh Bear. We kind of share the grand, so he's my grandbrother. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Good friend of mine. Dragon Feeny, the Cliffy, X Water. Um, a bunch of people in the community, the Mario Maker community. Essentially, if you just go into Mario Maker at all and watch anyone, everyone's super kind. I think it is legit the best community on Twitch. And I'm a little biased, obviously. Well, yeah. Yeah, I watch a lot of Mario Maker constantly. Um, and But other than Mario Maker, I watch a lot of Destiny uh, in my free time. I don't tell a lot of people that. But oh, okay. I watch like uh, Professor Broman, um, Goliathan. I watch a lot. King. Do you and play Destiny at all? I do. I play Destiny a lot. So I, I haven't talked too much about this because people in Mario Maker, they don't want to talk about Destiny. You know what I mean? But right. I play Wait. Destiny and PUBG and all that stuff. I, yeah, you said the other day that you were actually playing PUBG. Were you, were you playing on stream or were you just... Uh... Yeah. So in the Mario Maker community, we do something every Friday. Like We get a bunch of the streamers together and mm -hmm. we go play a different game. Oh, and that's so smart. Like a community. Yeah, that's cool. A community like Fridays with Friends is what we're calling it. And essentially, we just all get together and we play some other game. Recently, it's been PUBG and we got our chicken dinner 
our first nice. chicken dinner. It was great as a community. And we all stayed alive, which was the best part about it. Oh, those nice. are even more rare. Yeah, it was so crazy. It was all four of us survived. And then that's when we hosted you. <laughs> that's when we hosted your <laughs> afks <Yeah. laughs> did you uh did, did you uh, find any crates on your run i'm trying to remember on that one specifically i think we did we did yes there was we actually rocked up on a crate and there was a guy already there and he didn't see any of us and oh, wow. his friend was sniping and we rocked up on him and you could tell that his friend was like, dude, you just got four guys like coming towards <laughs> you because he like stood up and like was freaking out. And we took them both out. And uh, I forgot what was I didn't get the crate. Whoever got the crate, I think it was a sniper. But, One of the things that we do, uh, Cherry and I started a, um, a streamer community for Go Lurk Yourself podcast. And mm -hmm. we have a, a crew of people that we play with on us on usually it's Thursday nights. I think actually we were doing it Friday night this week because of something I had come up. But mm -hmm. um, we. We have a couple of different uh, fun games we do. Whenever it's a fog map now, everyone has to whisper the entire stream. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. That, yeah. that is but fantastic. It is, it is the funniest thing. Like, we... Uh, uh, we have so many clips from that the other day or last week's when we when it when the patch launched but the other thing we do is we have uh, naked crate runs where you're not allowed to take any clothes everyone has to go naked oh or, my god and all we do is we land in the middle of the map we find a car as soon as possible and we just chase down crates the whole game we don't and that is so fun the only gear you get is what you get out of crate and what you take off corpses oh <laughs> my god it's actually a really viable way to get a chicken dinner you're not always going to in the car like you pretty much know if it's going to be a good one if you get a car early, otherwise uh -huh. you're just spend the whole time trying to find a car, but you got to get to the middle of the circle because the plane's going to go somewhere in the white circle. So if it's, right. a, if it's a very Eastern most circle, then, you know, you got to get a car and get there or otherwise you're going to miss that first crate. Absolutely. That's, that's like the fun things like that. Like you're explaining to PUBG is kind of interesting because that's sort of what we do in Mario maker. It's make totally different. Games yeah. Rules. Make up your own games and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's I, I you're right there, man. That's that's what builds a community and gets people invested. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, not just the, that. Sorry, Keys. Um, no, you're good. But we were we've been absolutely maxing out PUBG when it first came out. Me and Crunk and a couple of the other guys as well. And it was getting to a point where we were getting really frustrated because it felt like we weren't making any progress. We weren't doing particularly well in matches. And it it to me anyway, it it wasn't being fun to play mm -hmm. anymore. So. Was it you, Crunk, that came up with the the crate run? Yeah. Mode, and well, after doing that a few times, gone. I definitely not the first person to do it, but I it, like yeah. the idea of making it it take their, yeah, yeah. Take clothes off and run out and do it. it breathes life into the game. <laughs> yeah, it it made it more interesting and made me actually want to go and play it. It was just fun. Another yeah. thing it does to we we do boot camps, uh, crate runs, and whisper streams, and and what the <laughs> boot camp is. If we we have some people who have been watching, who I just got the game, I want to play with you guys. Sure. Well, you know, I have I'm embarrassed to say 400 hours in this game. Wow. And these guys just started, so obviously they're going to be either all the time chasing us and not getting any kills, uh, and and also it makes people tense up when they're new. They're 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 nervous. I, uh, Absolutely. I, so we're just going to drop on the school, the military base, or the or or the apartments just over and over again until you understand that you're gonna you're gonna need to be aggressive. You're gonna need to take some mm -hmm. shots. You're probably gonna die a lot, and that's good. That's part of it. That's great. It probably deters a few people, but then the people that make it are probably like veterans in no time. Yeah. Well, yeah. you hope that's the hope anyway. But yeah. <laughs> So how do you go about finding new streamers on Twitch? Do you like start with the game you're interested in? Do you like look for communities? How do you go about like finding new people to follow? Yeah, um, I think taking the time and I have to sit down and be intentional about like networking. About like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and like find some new people that I can like get to know. Yeah, uh, and I I do that. I start off usually seeing who people are hosting. Like, who are my friends hosting? Because, um just getting to know people that are sort of in the community already makes it easier. You know, like if you are already in, let's say the PUBG community and you have, you want to find like someone that you'll gel with, it'll probably the easiest way to do that's probably to like find out someone who's hosting someone else. So it's like, Oh, you know, uh, cherry cakes hosting 
you know, whoever vanilla cake and I'm going to go hang out with them and get to know them. And like, you bring that connection with you. Exactly. Not that it's about like connections and getting all that. It's just about like, I know cherry kick would only host people that are really cool. And so I'm going to do that. And then I, it's hard to find cold Turkey. I don't recommend just like, I'm going to flick and pick, just like flick through the directory and just pick some random streamer. That's always like, really difficult sometimes you can find the best streamers in the world but most of the time uh you'll either find someone who doesn't speak your language or just someone who doesn't like fit your vibe and yeah. so i think using hosting is huge now with auto hosting as well like everyone's constantly hosting everyone else so mm -hmm. uh yeah that, that's what i would say uh check out hosts um but i do if there's like a new game coming out and like when destiny first came out i was uh you know trying to like i don't know if it was when it first came out but when i started getting into destiny i started like looking into streams there i just went to the destiny directory and started with the big guys and then went down from there and see like who do they talk to who hangs out in their streams you know so speaking of destiny are you playing destiny 2 at all oh so much man I got like, Xbox? I think, yeah, I'm on Xbox. I think I have like 90 hours right now or wow, 85 that's hours. That's a lot for a game that just came out not too long yeah. ago. Yeah. We, well, the, we, I was affected by like sort of the hurricane. Uh, Irma okay. like went off the side. And so we lost our internet and everything. Uh, and I just connected up to my, I wasn't able to stream. So I just connected my Xbox up to my neighbor's internet and just <laughs> played, I played Destiny 100% of the time. So I'm it's coming out on PC next month and I'm I've I played Destiny One on Xbox One, I think. Mm -hmm. Um like I waited till the last expansion came out and I kinda of burned through it. I've I played a lot of MMOs, so I kind of get to the to the end when it starts to get exponentially slower and I, I kinda of lose interest. Absolutely. Uh and rating kind of is a it, it's it's all it's a lot for me it's a lot more work than it is reward. So I mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed Destiny for about I don't know, five, six weeks after the, was it the wolf, something wolf expansion or maybe yeah, the, the house of wolves, house of wolves. And, and I really liked it, but when I hit that in like a brick wall, so I've been really mm -hmm. following the PC version of destiny Two. Would you, would you recommend it for people who like destiny one or I mean, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. My thoughts on it are this, like there's not a monthly fee for destiny. Um, a lot of people go in thinking like, okay, we, we want like world of Warcraft, uh, amount of content which is that's insane that's like a lot of content yeah um and so i i look at destiny 2 as in like i'm paying 60 bucks for this for the whole game start to finish and like it's gonna give me probably close to 100 hours of entertainment before i'm like okay i'm really burnt out on this um that's kind of where i'm getting up to now um it does kind of peter out towards the end yeah. uh, after you do the raid um and you've done trials which is a competitive multiplayer thing you've kind of like okay i've seen this i've done it i've done everything on the map like it's starting to peter out it doesn't peter out as much as like destiny one did it definitely has more of a sustain than that but i don't know man like it's it's really fun it's really freaking fun gun like bungie has their gunplay down so well and that's yeah. the game is just so freaking fun to play and the raid is so it, fun and all that's just a blast but you know you can play it a few times and then for me i'm like okay this is enough but i'm, I'm glad to hear that though that so i kind of temper my expectations because I'll, I'll probably get destiny 2 and play through it but it's it's not like you said and and i don't think i i don't think i really want another wow type mm -hmm. life soul sucker away you know what i mean right yeah <laughs> it's like a, a fun game to play go through and then when you get toward the end eh, we'll put it on the shelf and play some other games until while we're waiting for the next expansion to come out exactly and that's that's exactly where it is like 100 hours for 60 bucks i'm i'm down that is yeah. a good investment i'm like heck yeah that's a lot of time a lot of fun this is a complete sidetrack now but, uh, go for it <laughs> we need to go back um, <laughs> we need to go back jack <laughs> uh you've got a theme for those that don't know uh, you have a theme on your channel keys that is the no butts club uh-huh um, yes how did that originate i'd love to know where the story from that came yeah uh, i have no butt like literally i pretty much like <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not a lot of people know this 
<laughs> no, actually, everyone knows now. But um, everyone knows always like, so you literally don't have a butt. I'm like, I don't have a butt, but it's not like I'm missing my butt. I just don't have a butt, if you know what I mean. And so, like, <laughs> I was when I was in high school, I was walking around uh, one Friday night near some bars. I wasn't going in the bars. Uh-huh. Irresponsible. But, like, I was walking by the bars, and these girls came out of the bars. And there was three of us and there was three of them and the girls were completely wasted. And one of the girls looks at me and goes, I want the one without a butt. <laughs> and then my friends, we've always made the joke that I don't have a butt. And so when I, we were thinking of a sub club, you know, we were like, oh, we'll call ourselves like the keychain, or we'll call ourselves this. And then somehow we got onto the topic of that story. And then someone was like, let's just call ourselves the no butts club. I was like, sounds like a plan like if you guys don't want butts either let's all go there because on twitch there's that whole thing about butt emotes and you know what i mean yeah. like there's all that butt stuff so i'm just like let's just do the no butts club and just be the exact opposite of that and so if anyone comes into my channel and posts butt emotes I actually go in and ban them like not the person <laughs> oh. but the emote so nice. like people who come and use butt emotes in my chat i'll ban those butt emotes <laughs> so there's no Wait, you can ban that. emotes. Yeah, you can like ban emotes in your chat. I didn't know that, man. Yeah, I w- I saw one the other day that uh, someone had banned the Kappa emote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens a lot because yeah, Kappa's like overused. Yeah, overused, but also like apparently with Twitch statistics, uh, it's like sixty percent of arguments start off with the misuse of Kappa or something like that. Oh, really? So a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people just ban Kappa. If if I understand it right, it denotes sarcasm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then, if if people don't know that it denotes sarcasm, and you say something oh. offensive with kappa, yeah. then people get upset and uh, down the rabbit yeah. hole. I don't really care. I mean, kappa's kappa, so yeah, you can cap all you want. I gotta make a kappa butt <laughs> emote. That's what we gotta make. There you go. Yeah. So you could ban it on stream. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of where that came from. It's kind of personal history slash twitch uh history you know it was almost an embarrassing story but it started with the girl said i want the one without a butt so you yes know. exactly so, I got the <laughs> again, so there you go So we were talking earlier about um, you've been partnered uh, with Twitch for almost a year now. Yeah. And it's coming up to your anniversary next month, you say? Yes. What day is uh, it on? We'll, we'll promote your any events you have going on. I think on. I'm going to do an event. I don't have it announced yet, but it's okay. I'm going to do an event before TwitchCon because uh, I think it happens during TwitchCon. What, like what, day, the, what dates are TwitchCon? Um, the 19th through the 23rd. Okay. Or of October. So yes, we'll, we'll... I think it's the twenty second, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head. Off if I board. if I know, I think this episode will launch next Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it'll uh, be sometime. Yeah. So no plans that you can tell us about. Um, no, I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've kind of started planning it. We're going to do like a trifecta stream because I'm just about to hit three hundred subs. Um, oh, nice. And then I want to yeah, do good. like about to do. Uh, one year of partnership and then also going to TwitchCon. So I'm going to do mm-hmm. kind of like a um, a 300 subscriber stream plus a year of partnership plus a fundraiser for TwitchCon and uh, move on from there. So that's nice. going to be probably like, I would guess the week before TwitchCon, any time between like the 12th and the 19th. And it'll probably be like a 12 to 18 hour stream sort of thing. Yeah, I, I'm really, I have not worked on it at all. And I really should. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear the anxiety creeping in. Yes, exactly. I'm <laughs> like, I should be doing this right now, but. Sometimes you got to do a podcast, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love it. Was becoming a partner, partner always what you wanted? Or was it just something that kind of, kind of just happened? Did, you have to apply for it, don't you? Yeah, you have to apply. Um, I definitely wanted it. You know, I, I think any Twitch streamer, would kind of desire that in some way um but for me like i said when i started off i had no idea what the heck a partner was like i had zero ideas on what i was doing but um over time it just came into like seeing some of my friends that i was making get partnered and then seeing like even some of them over time go full-time 
to where they do it as a job full time. Wow. And like just seeing how much life that brought them and like how they did it. I was like, wow, I could really do this. And so um, there's actually this talk I had with my wife and I remember it vividly. I was like, I sat down and I told her, I was like, I want to do this as like a job. And she was like, what? Like, this, <laughs> like Okay. Yeah. It took a little bit to understand, but um, yeah, I just remember sitting down talking with her and being like, I love video games. This is great. I really, really want to do this. And uh, she was like, if this is your desire and this is your passion and you feel like you can do it, like go for it. Um, and That's so great. from that moment on with the support of my wife, like, of course, like I just went all out on it. I got to say, like, before we keep talking about that, like anyone who streams and has a significant other that is not into streaming or in general has a significant other, even if they are into streaming, like hats off to them because my significant other, like my wife is literally the hero of my stream because like if she wasn't on board as much as she is with my stream there's no way i'd be able to do what i do like Absolutely. you know like they do so much because i'm in here streaming like i stream 48 hours ish a week and so like i'm in here streaming that much and then above and beyond that i'm working on stuff outside of the stream and so i can't always be there to like clean the dishes or do all that stuff and so just having my wife be able to be so supportive and like she's amazing so anyone else out there who has a significant other make sure you tell them you love them and like freaking that they're the best because they're the true heroes of like full-time streamers in my opinion that's great man, to acknowledge her. that's it's very special to find someone who uh, either shares or understands your passions and can and support you that way that's really special heck yeah totally couldn't do it but now imagine if your wife also streamed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, oh, then we would get nothing done. Like, like no, well, everything. Would... <laughs> I was yeah. just telling Jerry yesterday, like, I have to take a day off of streaming because my wife and I both stream, right? Full time job. So we're like, I, I my my uh, just chores around the house are like two weeks behind. And you exactly. have a daughter as well. Yeah, we made that's her do great. all the work yesterday. Oh, <laughs> that's like <laughs> what? Yeah, that's that's um where we're at too like even she my wife has a full-time job so she does her job and then comes home and we still get behind sometimes too it's crazy oh there's just everybody i don't care if you're a streamer or if you just work full-time job and have any other hobbies you're gonna have those times i mean totally and people are like oh they don't have to deal with that like they've made it they're streamers you're like no we're still doing it like i still do to the issues i still do all of that stuff <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we talked a lot about Mario Maker earlier, um, you know, and, and I think the writing's on the wall for the Wii U. I think it was a year ago, but uh, do you think, do you strongly suspect that Nintendo next year will come out with uh, uh, Mario Maker 2 or, you know, what do you, th do you think they'll just port it or do you think they'll do like a fresh cut of paint and update yeah. it? Yeah, so I, I think they're going to do, uh, I do think they're going to release it. I think it's going to be a Mario Maker 2, like straight up Mario Maker 2 release. like. This is um, like a brand new game. I think a lot of people think they're going to port it, but I'm not that I have any insider knowledge or anything, but I do know I have friends who look into the code of Mario Maker and figure out things that way. Really smart people. And um, they're, they're saying like the way that it's programmed, it'd be really hard to, pro like, to appropriately port over to the Switch. And so oh, okay. that, that leads me into just thinking like it's a lot of speculation, but if I had my perfect world, it would be Mario Maker 2 and they would just go like all out and throw everything into it because they stopped um, supporting Mario Maker about a year ago, like completely stopped. And there hasn't been any updates except like small server updates and things like that. And they've completely went dark, quiet. The Mario Maker team went and worked on 3DS. That came out, and then they stopped upgrading that. And since then, they've just been like, the team itself, no one knows what they're working on, and they have just haven't, haven't said anything. So I would like to think, like, because of that, that they're going to be working on uh, Mario Maker 2 and that whole thing. That's where my mind goes. That makes sense. One, one of my 
crazy speculations just as a dreamer not really i don't have anything to support this but have you seen any of the odyssey screens lately with like some of the retro stuff put in there Mm -hmm. i love that would would it be crazy if they gave us a sandbox style 3d mario maker dude that would be insane like that would be absolutely insane i don't think that personally it would happen but i i didn't think mario maker would happen yeah so you never know with nintendo that's the thing you literally never know. it would be really hard for him to make something that would work really smoothly and well but you never who know. was it the 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 disney infinity had kind of a 3d sandbox mode where they could make 3d levels something along those lines but it, oh, you're cool. with a home console you know i know the twit the switch the twitch the switch <laughs> has a touch screen on it but mm-hmm. not necessarily a, a stylus one I, I wonder if they could make you know, balance between uh, a deep, but not so technical that people amateurs couldn't pick it up and figure it out quickly. Uh, 3D yeah. sandbox game. I, th- it, I think it'd be neat, but that's really pie in the sky. I think. Yeah, it, it would be really cool. Um, they just had some ROM hackers for Mario 64 make a ROM that is essentially that for Mario 64. So you can yeah. open it up an emulator and make your own Mario 64 games and things like that. You hosted? Was it? Um... Foxen was it yesterday? Yes, Foxen. Uh, yeah, I just saw him. Uh, I think he was almost to the end of uh, doing one of his levels for Mario 64. It looked really cool. Yeah, it's really really cool what they're doing. He was actually doing like a full on like ROM hack like on the PC. But yeah. there's this tool that they came out with that essentially you can do it on the N64. Like you can put oh, it on wow. an EverDrive for the N64 and make Mario 64 courses on your Nintendo 64. That's really crazy. nuts. Yeah, smart people, nice. man. But if you think about it, that's how you know with Kaizo Mario. That's how Mario Maker started before, way before Nintendo put one out. There were absolutely online editors and all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. I really think the Mario Maker is definitely going to be uh, uh, Mario Maker Two. At least is going to be a thing. Like in my perfect world, it would be announced spring and released in like fall. Yeah. What would you say are the top best things about your channel that, that you bring to Twitch that's unique that that kind of they're not going to get anywhere else? For me, like the top three things, I don't know. I'm a morning streamer, so I'm I there's a lot of people that just put me on to their work and stuff like that. And I always want to like my whole stream is focused around positivity and put a smile on your face. I think just anyone you can't really go wrong anywhere in the community. Um but it's hard to think top three. I don't, I don't know. No, that, uh, that's fair. Yeah, I just I think that I, I really focus on positivity. If that's your thing in your stream, like I'm a uh, super upbeat dude. Drink a lot of coffee. Talk a lot about <laughs> Mario. And, and Mo- yeah, Mario politics. But just go also like if you come check out my channel, please go check out some other Mario Maker people channel. Because like I said, I'm biased, but I do think it is the best community on Twitch. It's super welcoming super open and we love having new people come in and talking to new people like you can go to any of the bigger streams in the mario maker community and really just you can have conversations with the streamer and people they like it's really crazy um so i I highly recommend if you guys are looking for uh mario stuff and you want to hang out go check out the whole community it's really great along with you keys one of my other favorite mario maker streamers uh is high five oh dude yes because he's so entertaining some of the stuff i like he does in his channel uh-huh. it, it just makes me me so happy to watch it absolutely he is the first person i ever sub to oh and, really nice. yeah and he is like he is amazing if you ever see his streams if you guys want to see something entertaining he plays more of a character on his streams yeah and um i mean it's just hilarious like he is one of the funniest guys i've ever seen you you see you see it in his face you're like man this guy like is i could talk with him at a bar for like four hours and just be in <laughs> stitches the whole time like <laughs> yeah. that's just the kind of personality he is he's a funny dude so i highly recommend checking him out if you had to choose between streaming and music which uh you have mentioned before which one would it be yeah um I, like i love music uh it's I still play music a lot. Uh, at least once a week after a stream, I break out my music stuff and play music. But um, I don't know. I kind of made that decision a long time ago, to be honest. And 
like I was making a lot of music right before I went into like full-time streaming where I was like, okay, let's do streaming. And the reason why I pick streaming, I guess, is more so because I can make music for stream. And a big part of my stream is music. And uh, just being able to like, I guess the what I'm trying to say is like streaming is the best part of every thing I love. Like mm-hmm. I get to do music, I get to do video, I get to do comedy, I get to do entertainment, um, I get to play video games. Like it's the culmination of every single like thing that I love. If that makes sense. So I, that's why I kind of chose like way back when I was like, I'm I'm gonna put music on the back burner for a little bit, um, even though I still love it, still play it, and I still get to do it for the stream. So do you ever play like do you sing or do you just play piano? Um, I sing too. I don't sing or play on the stream, but I'll make like music stuff to go in the background, if that makes sense. Everyone's oh, nice. I don't tell anyone that that's what they're listening to, by the way. So yeah, I, you know. I do all the music to the this podcast unless we, we sometimes nice. we download some some transition stuff just because it's freely available. But if you're ever interested in making uh, music for this podcast, I'd love to get some, uh, even if it's just transitional stuff. I'd, I'd yeah, love man. to do that. So why don't you ever uh, play on stream? Is it um, just not not your bag to perform on Twitch? Yeah, I mean, like music for me, I don't know if it's the same for you. It's like super emotional. Okay. Um, like not emotional as in like, I'm going to start crying. But like as in like, I care a lot about my stuff. And someone comes on the stream and I care a lot about my stream too. But I'm not like, I don't know how to explain it. It's hard to explain, but long story short, you get trolls all the time in your stream. So, like, yeah. someone comes into my stream and is like, you suck at Mario Maker. It's like, okay, who cares? <laughs> Whatever. But, like, if I'm playing music on stream, it's something that I really hold, like, personally really, really close. I think, like, that would that could mess me up a lot more and cut me. So, it's yeah. just yeah. not, you know, it's, I like to hold that a little bit closer. Um, and I don't, like, if I'm playing something that I've made on the stream, I'm not, like, Hey guys, I made this. Check this out. Listen to this. Cause I don't want like I don't want the feedback or the you know, does that mean yeah. expose yourself to that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the trolls have a way they can seep into you depending on like, you know, it's 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 easy to sit here and go, yeah, they're just trolls, screw them. <laughs> but you know, after you've been streaming for 12 hours oh, man. and you've you know, you're 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 drained energy, your energy's drained, you're not in a good mood, something you're thinking about something else, and then a troll comes in at just the right time, man, they can get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i mean it, it's horrible i got like last year probably about a year ago i got on some list somewhere uh for one of the streams i was doing i it, i don't know if it was like a 4chan thing or if it was something somewhere and i had like this one stream i had like 180 trolls or something uh, like bands uh-huh. in that stream just of like people that just kept coming in and saying like horrible stuff it's just like after a while i was like man this is ridiculous. Like it gets to you. It does. Yeah, it does. It can wear you down. I mean, it's easy to abstractly go, you know, they're, they're, they're just trying to cut you down, but you know, enough, enough long enough. If I had to do 180 trolls one day or 150, I would just shut it off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> well, that was a long I, time was, ago though, we were talking about PUBG earlier. I, my first major trolling incident, um, I was playing, I hit solo. I was playing PUBG. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I had 10 people watch me, maybe. And I killed somebody on one of them in the game. And all of a sudden, they happened to be a streamer. I had no idea. Oh, Their no. people came into my channel and were just like racist, sexist, uh, all the, the worst thing. They started, they, uh, my Discord was not locked down until last week. Whoa. Uh, now it is because they were posting like the worst crap you can imagine, you know, on, on my, on my uh, server, on my, uh, discord server. yeah wow <laughs> yeah and um luckily um our first guest is a friend of mine one of the guys who got me into twitch or helped really helped me understand things and like gave me a lot of good advice starting out his name is b shiv mm-hmm. he's a mod on my channel and he's i mean he's an all you could ever want in a mod because he was just all over it he went there in before i even knew what was going on he had my channel cleaned up i like i didn't even saw him half the pictures because he had already deleted them out wow yeah it's crazy that's intense i've never heard of like that intense of a troll going on in yeah it's like time. like over killing someone over kill someone in PUBG, and it's not like i you know there was any kind of special thing about the kill we landed at a place and i killed him before he got a gun that's that happens every round to somebody wow. usually to me 
<laughs> I just true. thought it was it was kind of sad. For it wasn't even the the guy that was streaming though, Crunk, was it? It was people that were in his chat or his followers. Yeah, it's a yeah. crazy community, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I figured out who it was, but I don't care enough to do anything about it because right. it's like I don't even want to rile the beast. If if their fans are that devout, I don't want to pick that fight. Yeah, I, mm. I hear that. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Keys, for joining us. And a big thanks to you guys for listening as well. Uh, Keys, do you have any social media that you'd like to tell us about if people want to follow you or get in touch, maybe? Yeah, Twitter. Um, Twitter.com slash Grand Keys stream. And just follow me there. I keep that up to date. Also, have a Discord. If that's more of your thing, you can check out my channel. It'll lead you to the Discord. Please go and follow Grand Keys on his social media and also uh, the podcast on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. Make sure to go in there and subscribe, rate, and like our podcast. Catch us here next time on Go Lurk Yourself. For people listening that haven't seen your stream, that maybe listen to this podcast, what would you say to try to get them to come check you out, like a, a little bit of an advertisement for you? Yeah. I, if you like Mario Maker in any sense, any Mario at all, or you just want some like positive vibes, come hang out. Um, we do a lot of viewer levels. So if you have Mario and you have levels and maybe you never knew that somebody is actually out there playing people's levels, like, I'll play your level, even if it's a troll level. Submit it on Tuesday. We got Troll Tuesday. And uh, I'll play that level. Um, yeah, just come hang out. I'd love to, love to meet you guys.